Hello and welcome to today's episode of This Is Kadikoi podcast. Today I'm joined by y- Yukis, but Ilkai was at a wedding, so he will not be joining us. So, Yukis, how are you today? I'm really good. I just came home from a family meeting. I was uh, in the east, uh, east side of Finland, uh, seven hours away from Helsinki. So I've been driving like 14 hours in two days. But uh, yeah, I'm really good. How are you? I'm good, thanks. So uh, I'm sure you've got what everyone else has on their mind, which is the Monaco match. Not much has been yeah. going on at the club, so this is... I think what most of us are thinking about at this stage. Um, so, I mean, obviously, I've heard you don't... Well, you've expressed your views before that you don't like the first leg. You would rather we played in Monaco for the first game. But unfortunately, yeah. that is not the case. Um, but so, we're playing in Turkey. Do you think we're going to try and be attacking for the first leg, or will we go defensive? What's your opinion on this? Uh, I'm a bit afraid that we we are not going to be too at- attacking, uh, because uh, <clears throat> the main thing is not to concede any goals, you know, to give away goals for Monaco. So I think we are, we are trying to keep it as uh, nil-nil till... 60 or 70 minutes and then try try to score a goal or then we're gonna try in uh, first 15 minutes to go uh, score one or two and and then just uh, just to keep it as that uh, that's my that's my uh, you what about you uh yeah I think um, we probably will go defensive as usual I mean I I would be happy with a nil nil uh, in because like I, I, re- I wouldn't like to concede the away goal. I think maybe one uh, nil nil might be better than two uh, one win in some ways because when we play the next leg at Monaco, they they will be sort of more trying to defend their goal from getting an away goal from us. Um, but with, if if we had won the two one, it's likely we'd be a bit more defensive and it, we'd be having their attacks constantly in the second leg. But yeah, I mean, I just hope we do well. So yeah, I think keeping clean sheet is probably the most important thing for the first leg. A win would be nice as well. Um, so, who would you like to see play at, um, in this game? Is there anyone in particular? Uh, well, I would like to see uh, Emenik and uh, Robin Van Persie play together. But uh, Robin Van Persie will probably... He will not start. He got some knock in the last friendly. So I think uh, Fernando will probably start. And then I'm not quite sure if we're gonna ha- if we're gonna have uh, two strikers or we're gonna just start with Fernando. But I, I would hope uh, we would start with two strikers. It's um, <clears throat> good to have now Emenik uh, Emenik Emenik back in the team because he brings some uh, much needed pace. You know we can. Uh, really have good fast counters now with the fast striker and we can play some long balls as well he will he will win all the duels i guess you know if he if he gets the ball he can just go like a tank <laughs> <laughs> yeah he is the black bull they call him <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean, I, it would be good to see sort of Van Persie play. I'm I'm not sure whether he's fit enough at this stage. Um, I've seen sort of lineups. People are saying maybe Emenik, Fernandao, uh, or maybe Artif and Fernandao up front. But um, there's also the talk of the new three-five-two formation, which we have been playing. Um, what do you think about? Do you like the new formation? Do you think we're going to play with it in the Monaco game? Well, on paper, I I like it. You know, I think it's a good tactic if we can just, uh, you know, if we can really play well with that tactic, it's it's good because we have a perfect players for that formation, and uh, it's good tactic in a way that you you have a. Defensive wise, you have always you can you can have like five defenders, but when you attack, the wing backs will be attacking. So you have like three, five, two. Then so it's a it's flexible formation, 
And I like that that way really much about that formation. But uh, yeah, and it, of course there there will be then two strikers, which is good. Yeah, I mean it does look sort of nice. Um, but it, I mean, obviously, in our preseason games, not many people have been too impressed. It is just preseason, so it's not the end of the world if we're not playing at our best. Um, but I, a part of me thinks this he uh, Pereira might just sort of be testing out this formation a bit more it, because of preseason. We, I mean, I'm not sure, but maybe when we get to the Monaco match, he'll uh, change back to sort of four players at the back. The defense. I think Fenner Int uh, said, sort of this this formation wouldn't actually be used that much. So I think he could he could just be testing it out. Um, we have to sort of wait and see because only he knows what's going on. But yeah, I mean, it's um, it's also it yeah it's quite defensive as well. So he he might use it against Monaco. Um, so another question. There's sort of obviously the transfer talk has died down. We've signed is it five players this summer, so I'm just thinking. And obviously everyone's still sort of waiting for our number ten signing. Uh, it seems to be the only piece missing. Um, do you think we're going to sign anyone? Uh, the rumours have sort of died down. And do we need to sign anyone in your view? Uh, not anymore. You know, I I don't really. First, I thought that we we should get number ten, uh, but uh, it's already end of July. Uh, I think uh, Artif and Sully can really do the job if if we're gonna use number ten. But uh, I'm not even quite sure if we're gonna use number ten at all. So <clears throat> that's not really necessary. But uh, there's always a chance that uh, we're gonna wait till uh, we see if we're gonna qualify for the Champions League and then spend some money and uh, if we are not gonna, going to qualify then most certainly we, we are not going to get number 10 yeah I mean yeah I sort of think the club doesn't really seem like they are sort of that making any sort of moves anymore to further signings sort of feels a bit like uh, January you know uh all the other clubs sort of sign players in that transfer window, but Fenerbahce never seemed to want to. Mm-hmm. And I think in that way, uh, in some ways, Fenerbahce is quite a good, well-run club. They sort of just identify their transfer targets and get them in quite quickly, sort of, and then they just decide, uh, they don't really try, you know, sort of maybe panic shopping, uh, some teams might do. So I think it could be the case that we won't see um, a new sort of attacking midfielder and I hope uh, well I think Artif can do the job like you said I'm not so sure about Sarli personally I still think he might be a bit young and he hasn't played much uh, in the past two seasons because of his Roma deal sort of fell through almost um, but yeah I, I mean hopefully he'll get his form back and we can see him uh, helping out the midfield uh, yeah. Uh, so I'm sure you've also seen many uh, Van Persie rumours. They've all sort of started up again, even though uh, the club announced he wasn't for sale. So, you know, clubs like PSG, uh, even Barcelona and Sporting Lisbon have sort of been linked with him. And there was Stoke as well. So what's your sort of take on the, all these rumours about him? Yeah, that's... Bit weird that they most of the rumors started uh, after Fenerbahce announced that that Robin van Persie is not uh, on sale. Uh, <clears throat> don't know if it's because uh, Robin van Persie or his agent never said anything about it. So maybe they should come out and say that yeah, we are going to you know Robin van Persie will stay at the club. Don't know or then it, uh, is it just. Uh, know but let's say the rumors that they they never read the uh Fenerbahce <laughs> website and saw that they are not going to sell Robin Van Persie and just made these rumors up. Yeah. And sporting Lisbon they 
like uh, their quotes. Hog Jesus said that they should, they would need to sell their stadium to get Robin Van Persie, yeah. <laughs> and they, they don't have such money. <laughs> yeah, so maybe that shows the sort of how strong these rumors are that the coach is sort of saying, "What we can't yeah. do that." Yeah, uh, and I think uh, I think Stoke seem to like our players. They said they wanted Nanny earlier in the season, well, in the summer. Uh, they publicly publicly came out and said that they wanted him. So, but I think these, uh, I think everyone, he's uh, Van Persie, such a big player. He's always there's always going to be clubs wanting him, and I think his rumours started sort of about October last year about clubs, set, uh, you know, rumours about him being linked away from Fenerbahce. Just it just seems to be all the time, and then there's Chinese clubs rumored, and I just think obviously, yeah, I think it's all rumors. Uh, it probably would help if Van Persie could come out and say something, but I mean, we don't really see him much, even at training, so who knows what he's up to at the moment, but I'm sure it would help, yeah. But yeah, I think that he's going to leave, I think he will stay, or then he. Or then he will uh, wait until he sees if we qualify for the Champions League. Mm, that could be a big we, factor. Yeah. yeah. Were you gonna? Because he, he he's uh, he's not a youngster anymore, and he probably wants to play uh, one or two more seasons in Champions League. So that might be a factor. Yeah, I mean, it would be great to be in the Champions League again. I can barely remember the last time we were in it. But, you know, obviously Monaco, uh, probably the hardest team we could have pulled. Um, and I've seen lots of fans saying, obviously, they, they can't predict the future. But they think after, if we even if we beat Monaco, we'll, uh, we'll be playing Manchester City in the next round. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it could be. Yeah, so yeah. Hopefully, it will be Ajax or some other team. But uh, you know, Manchester City uh, doesn't look ready either. They just got a new uh, coach as well, and <laughs> but the new coach is Pep Guardiola. <laughs> yeah, he is. Like we have Vitor Pereira. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure fans would uh, prefer the former, but. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, obviously that would be even better if we could get through after beating Guardiola's Man City. But <laughs> those are dreams at this stage. I'd much rather um, go, get pull a uh, sort of a smaller team than risk the glory, sort of, <laughs> and pulling Man City out of the pot against us. But uh, yeah, I think that's all we'll talk about today. Uh, hopefully we win the game against Monaco. And is there anything you'd like to say to the listeners as a parting message? Uh, well, enjoy the rest of the weekend and uh, let's all hope and trust our team. We're going to win the Monaco and qualify for the <laughs> next round of uh, qualifiers in Champions League. Yeah, let's. I'll be in France wearing a Fenerbahce t shirt. <laughs> but yes, <laughs> see you in the next episode. See ya.